Okay. Okay, yeah, why don't we pray and then we'll get started, right? We'll just pray. We thank the Lord. We thank the Lord for who He is. We thank the Lord because He's a He's our Father, Heavenly Father. Thank the Lord because He loves us, He cares for us, He's concerned about us, right? Let's thank the Lord. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this for this beautiful day that you've given us, Lord. We thank you that every day is a day full of so much of potential. But Lord, you pack it with good things for each one of us to discover and to walk in. Lord, we thank you for this day. And Lord, we thank you, God, that um, Lord, you, you are so mindful of us, Master. You know, God, everything that is going on in our lives. And, um, and yet, Lord, you draw near to us, Lord. And you take care of all our needs according to your riches and glory. And Father God, we, we just want to thank you for your love, for your grace, and your mercy today, Master. We thank you, Lord, as your word declares, the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and it adds no sorrow to it. And we thank you for the every blessing that we have received today, God. Till today, Master, every blessing, Lord, everything in all realms, whether it be in the spirit, whether it be in the Lord, in our emotions, whether it be in our bodies, or Lord, all aspects, Father God, we thank you for every blessing and the amazing ways in which you have blessed us, Lord. We thank you. And so, God, we today we give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Okay, at the start, I just want us to write down any three blessings that you received. Three blessings that you are thankful for, thankful to the Lord for. Okay, just write down quickly. Three blessings that you are thankful to the Lord for. Okay, uh, online students as well. Three, three things. Three blessings that you have received from the Lord and you are thankful to Him for these things, right? Okay, yeah. If you if you want to post it, online students, if you want to post it on the chat, that's fine. I think Sam has gone ahead and done it. Um, so Sam, is it in that order or uh, order of priority? <laughs> what you posted? Yeah, it's it's that date also. So I have to put <laughs> today is a uh, Valentine's Sorry, Day. Sam, I think you're muted. Can we? On the monitor, one second. We're not able to hear. One second. Yeah, can you say something, Sam? Yeah, can you hear me, Pastor? No, one second. It's on? Check. Uh, for some reason, we're not able to hear, Sam. Sorry. Um, OK, no problem. Let's no. try and. Is it connected? No, it's not okay. Okay. Everyone written down? Check, check, okay. And I think bring it down. Um, did somebody raise their hands? Yeah, yes, uh, Gertrude, Gertrude, go ahead. Uh, Pastor, I want to thank God for the gift of life that he has given me mm -hmm. and gift of healing and gift of tongues. Okay, life, healing, and tongues. Yes. From Sam's <laughs> wife, home, and ministry. Um, anyone else? Do you want to? List down, you know, like when we list down and we write down, uh, it makes it even more real, you know. Maybe it's in our mind, maybe it's there in our hearts, but then when you actually write it down or, you know, put it, text it, or, you know, somewhere, enter it somewhere, and you see it for yourself, then you realize, hey, this is something that's real. It makes it so much more real, right? So, yeah. Anybody else wants to share? 
whatever you've written down. What are those blessings, yeah, Joseph? You've you written down, right? Ah, okay. Anyone else? Yeah, Caleb. I'm thankful for his good fellowship. For? Good fellowship. Thankful for good fellowship. And of course, thankful for his favor and love. His favor and love. And okay. For good talent. For talent, okay. Talent and ability. Right. Okay. Uh, see, um, good health, peace of mind, uh, Bible college. Uh, that's Sanjay. Lucy Samuel, thank God for blessing me to study the word of God. I thank God for my family. Um, being blessed at all times with his riches, um, love, and good health. Right. Awesome. Yeah. So, why do you think okay, all these blessings are there? Why do you think God has blessed you? Were you being a good boy, a good girl, <laughs> a good person? Why do you think He has blessed you? Sorry? It's His nature. It's His nature to bless. Okay. Does that mean that you are not a good person? He saw you and it was good, and He said, okay. This is a good boy, so I want to bless the talent and fellowship, and uh, and that's that's true. Yeah. Anyone else? He desires to see his children prosper and be happy. I think Lucy is, uh, but he's mindful of us, right? So our God is not someone who is, you know, who, who's out there distanced from us or alienated from us somewhere you know out there observing or sometimes even not observing what is happening uh, not connected you know disconnected out there and uh, but he's not at all like that right like what Caleb shared like his um, that is his very nature you know then that that's what we saw last class right that is that is is it is in his internal uh, how do we say it? You know, it's in his, it's in his very nature. It's in his personality. This is how he is. That he wants to bless his people. Okay. So uh, sometimes we go through maybe bad experience, maybe lack, uh, maybe some kind of you know difficult circumstances. And when we go through that, we are not able to connect the fact that God is a God whose nature is to bless. Yes or no? Yeah. You know, sometimes we go through some difficult times and then we, we say, okay, where is God in all this? Right? But the thing is, we need to get back to who God says He is or what God says about Himself. Right? And, we, and the best place is, of course, the, the Word of God, where He describes about Himself, where people testify about God, about who He is, right, and what He has done. And the pages of Scripture testify to the fact that He is a good God, that He is a faithful God, right? And so we understand that it is in His very innate nature to bless people. Okay. So that is why we can go and pray. See, if you, if you, if you look at the covenant names of God, right, what, some, what are some covenant names of God? Jehovah, Jaira, Rafa, Shalom, right? Nisi, Sidkenu, right? Muttadesh, you know, all these uh, funny sounding, <laughs> you know, words, but they are packed with meaning and it is, you know, these are covenant names because God is actually making a covenant. He's introducing himself and he's saying, this is who I am. Okay, so he's saying, okay, Jehovah Nissi. So he's saying, I am the banner of victory for you. You know, there's a meaning behind that name, right? So whenever he introduces himself, he says, This is who I am. This is what I can do, and this is what I will do. Right? Whenever he introduces himself. So we see that, you know, not only is it is it in his nature, but the way he introduces himself, he describes himself as this. 
Okay, so he's he's one who brings blessing. He's one who guarantees this. He introduces himself as this. So therefore, we can be confident. Like we can have faith in the fact that God is a God who wants to bring this into my life, who wants to bring victory into my life, who wants to bring success or prosperity into my life. See, otherwise, what's the point in praying? Right? If, if God is not a God who will bless, if God is not a God who will heal, you know, what is the point in praying? Because we are not praying, in, the, in that case, we are not praying according to God's will. We cannot stand in faith. Right? We, can't, we can't be sure of you know, like what faith is. Right? It is the evidence of things not yet seen. It's the substance of things that are hoped for. Right? So what is the point in praying at all? So we can pray in faith. We can pray fully believing because when we understand that this is who God is. Right? So, so also when it comes to blessings and what God does for us and what God wants to bring into our lives, we can be fully confident because it is his nature to bless. So we're just going to look at a few things and to, to answer that question, right? How can we be confident? We need to be confident, right? We need to be sure. Otherwise, you know, we will never be, we will always be in two minds, right? We will waver in unbelief. Right? We will not be in we will not be in one mind, single minded about these things. Right? Maybe some when sometimes when difficulties come, God, are you there or not? You know, do you want to bless or not bless? Do you want to heal or not heal? We'll be in two minds when we see some circumstances which are difficult. Right? But when we know for sure this is who God is, we can be, you know, fully trust him. We can fully, you know, depend on him. Okay, so we looked at uh, a, a kind of a couple of scriptures. We saw Genesis one last time, Genesis one twenty seven, where he created man in his own image, and he blessed. Right, that's the thing he did. He blessed them. He, 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 it says he created him male and female. Um, verse twenty eight. Then God blessed them and said to them, "Okay, do this. Right, be fruitful and multiply and so on." Okay, um, so we see. Uh, several scriptures like that, right? James 1, 17 in the New Testament, God, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights. Okay, so he's talking about God the Father, that the perfect gift, the good gift, comes from him, right? Which means he's the giver of good gifts. He's the giver of good things in our lives. It comes from him. So, so we can be absolutely you know, confident and sure that like God wants to give me good things. Right? He wants to bless me with good things. Why? Because that is who he is. Right? That is his nature. Okay, so we look at, look at um, you know, the Lord Jesus. Okay? Um, Isaiah 9 and verse 6. You know, this is what it says about the Lord, right? the prophetic um, the verses, scriptures, right? For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Isaiah 9 verse 6. And the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Okay, Prince of Peace. Which means Shalom. Okay, that word peace used there is Shalom. And uh, it does not, uh, you know, it, it doesn't mean that just... Uh, something, a quiet place, you know, that word peace used there, it's shalom. It goes beyond some place quiet. You know, sometimes when we look at some forest or some, you know, some maybe some green grass is there and some trees are there and everything is very quiet. You're know, out there. You say, oh, wow, such a peaceful place, right? Such a peaceful place. So it's not just absence of noise, that we are talking about, you know, he's the prince of peace. It's not that God will just, you know, create that uh, ambience or all that create the environment where there is no noise or conflict. You know, it's 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 more than that. It goes beyond that, right? So that word shalom, it means total well-being. Okay, which means peace of mind. It also means uh, there is goodwill 
there is deliverance, there is prosperity, safety, so on. So that's the word shalom. Okay. So who is Jesus? He is the prince of shalom. Right? He's the author, he's a prince, he's a, from which shalom originates. So you see that he's a prince of shalom. Right? This shalom comes from him, which means that he is you know, the originator of shalom. Okay, uh, one more verse that you see in verse uh, uh, Isaiah 48 and uh, verse 17 and 18. Okay, thus says the Lord your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I'm the Lord your God who teaches you to profit, who leads you by the way you should go. Oh, that you had heeded my commandments, then your shalom would have been like a river and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. So he's saying your shalom, your peace would have been like a river. Okay? So a river is not stationary, it is moving. Right? So sometimes we wonder, okay, after 10 minutes, will the river stop flowing? What do you think? does not, right? It just keeps flowing. There's a never-ending supply of water and because of which it's called a river and it is flowing. Okay? And here, scripture is, is talking about, oh, that you had heeded my commandments, then your peace, your shalom, would have been like a river and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. So what, is, what do we understand? The prince of shalom his intention is to bring shalom into our lives. And here it says, if you had heeded the commandments, if you had heeded the instructions of the Lord, your shalom would have been like a river, never ending, right, without limit, flowing like a river. Okay, um, And we know that God is not a partial God, wanting shalom only for some people, but whoever approaches, whoever seeks him, right, he, this is something that is available. Okay. Okay, so that's one thing that we can say that, okay, the very nature of God is to bless. Okay, this is his internal nature to bless people. Okay, the second thing we can, why we can be confident, right, that God wants to bless people. Second thing is the, when you look at the general promises that are there in scripture, okay, so we need to understand you know, the difference between what is Logos and what is, what is Rhema. Okay, I think we would have studied it uh, last semester also. You know, what is Logos and these, these two Greek words, Logos and Rhema. Okay, Lo Logos is the general instruction of God's word, the general teaching of God's word. And Rhema is, is, uh, the, is something that is quickened or highlighted specifically for a personal, you know, for a personal need which is something that is highlighted or quickened from the Logos, from the general instruction, right? So simply put, we can say, okay, I'm, I'm reading my Bible and uh, I've read, uh, I'm reading it, and the Holy Spirit is highlighting something, right? making something real. He's like taking this real and say, okay, this need for you today um, uh, is met through this, through this word. Like we understand, right? So it's like something that, that is personal, that is deep, that takes care of something, it touches your heart, and that's the Holy Spirit quickening the Logos for us. So the Rhema is like the quickened Word of God. You know, when we read Ephesians chapter 6, we read about the sword of the Spirit, okay? and, and, uh, and uh, uh, the word that is used there is Rhema. Okay? The sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. The word used there is Rhema, which means that the quickened Word of God is a weapon as we use it, as we speak it, that is the sword of the spirit. It's a weapon we use right? against discouragements, against lies, against deception. When we release that word, that is the rhema word of God that has been put in our hearts. Right? Okay. So the so we know what is the logos, what is the rhema. Okay. So you re read this through the scriptures, we read through some of the promises, and the Holy Spirit highlights this to us and says, okay, you know, this is your word for today. Right? Or this is the meaning. And, and so we are very deeply convicted in our hearts. Right? But apart from that, when we look at the general principles, okay, it's not, you know, it, it is there. It is there as a logos, the general principles of God's word. You know, when we see that, there is enough and more which talks about the fact that 
when we take these principles, when we we'll take these promises, these are to bring a blessing into a person's life. For example, Psalm 1. Okay, Psalm 1, 1 to 3. We all, maybe we have read this verse, right, several times. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. It starts like this. Hey, you are blessed if you're not living a life according to the wisdom or instruction of the ungodly people. Which means, you know, if you're not, if you're not walking according to ungodly wisdom, something that's against God, right? Saying, blessed is that person. Blessed is the man, right? Blessed is the man. And then it, let, let's just read through the whole thing. Who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Okay, so this is a promise. This is a general promise to, to everyone, right? You, me, everyone. And it comes with certain conditions, right? It's a conditional promise. What is the condition? Okay, blessed is a man who does not walk like this, who does not live like this. That's how it starts. And then it also says, but he does this, he or she, you know, does this. What, what does he or she do? Okay, delight is in the law of the Lord. So delighting in the Lord, meditating in the law, uh, in the word of God, day and night. And then goes on to three, say in verse 3, this is how the person shall be, like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Okay, So what does that mean? That means that the tree is actually getting enough and more nutrition. There's a never-ending supply. right? So by the rivers of water. That brings forth its fruit in season. Right? So the tree brings forth its fruit in season. Uh, it, it means fruitful, productive, right? Whose leaf also shall not wither. Okay, so this means that irrespective of what's happening in the environment, the tree is still thriving, flourishing, and whatever he does shall prosper. So he's saying this is how this person who's delighting in the word of God, who meditates day and night in the word of God, this is how this person shall be. So that's a general promise for anyone, for any believer who, take, who, who can actually take it and do this and say, okay, God, you know, I'll do this. I'm not going to walk in the counsel of the ungodly. I'm not going to sit in the seat of the scornful, right? But I'm going to do this. And so this is, this is a promise. Psalm 23 again, where Psalm 23 starts with saying, the Lord is my shepherd. And it, what is the second part of it? I shall not. Yeah, what does that mean? Means lack. Yeah. So which means that hey, there, there, there won't be any insufficiency in my life. Right? There's I will have, always have sufficiency because the Lord is my shepherd. And it goes on to say, you know, how, talk about how he's my shepherd. He leads me, he guides me, he makes me to lie down, he provides for my needs, he protects me, right? He's there as my constant companion, even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death. And he, you know, and he makes up, you know, a uh, public display of me in front of my enemies. He, you know, provides for my needs, it, all that. And then so that the psalmist declares and says, surely goodness and for mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. You know, that's his testimony. So these are, again, something that is general for everybody, applicable for everybody. And so on, you know, we see all these things. So we see that the general promises of God also point to the fact that God is a good God and He's the one who brings blessing, good things into our lives. Okay, so we should not, when we look at the struggles of the world, when we look at things of the world, it, all these, sometimes it's like, you know, you don't have to look around much. You look at the newspaper, end of the day, you know, you feel so depressed. You know, like, what is happening in the world? What is happening in the world? You know, all these, all the negative things are just as if it's captured and put there in one place. You watch, you know, news. That's it. There's nothing good that is reported. There could be hundred and one things happening that are good things, 
but those are not you know reported right and and sometimes we think oh, what is happening you know there's there's nothing good that is happening you know god what is god doing right? but the fact is that this is his nature he has given his promises and god is you know like you all of you you know wrote down okay hey, this is a blessing this is a blessing and i need to thank god for it right so each of us we are mindful of the fact that god is you know somebody who's bringing these good things into our lives because of who he is okay third thing how can we be confident that god is someone who wants to bless me is when we look at the blessings of abraham you know you and i are living on the other side of the cross right um and because we live in this new dispensation okay now this side of the cross is before the cross this side is after the cross okay after what happened on the cross so we are people we are privileged to be living in this dispensation the side of the cross and because of it something has happened to us okay um Okay, first let's just look at the blessings of Abraham. Okay, this is what it says, um, uh, Genesis twelve and verse two. Right, you have it there in all the notes. Okay, twelve two says, "I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing." Okay, so so many scriptures about. Just blessings. So many scriptures having that word "bless," right? I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you, etc. Genesis thirteen verse two. We saw this that Abraham um, was very rich, rich in livestock, in silver, and in gold, and so on. So we looked at that, um, you know, earlier when we looked at people who were blessed by God. We looked at Abraham. We looked at the generations: Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, and so on. Okay, but the good thing is this. You know, I'm just coming down to Galatians three. Okay, Galatians three, verse thirteen says, "Christ has redeemed us." What is this "us" referring to? All of us as believers in Jesus, right? Christ has redeemed us, which means taken us out, right? Taken us out of what we can say as a curse of the law. You know, He's taken us out of that. Having become a curse for us on the cross, for it is written, "Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree." Verse fourteen, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. Okay, so we look at the blessing of Abraham and we say, okay, he was very rich in livestock. He had, you know, the Lord blessed him. Uh, he had favor upon him. He was a, you know, he had communion with God. He he was a friend of God. He had faith, yeah, which God commended, and and all that we we see, all the blessings that he walked in. Okay. Now we could say, okay, that is his blessing. What about us? What about me? Right. But in Galatians chapter three, we see that Christ has redeemed us from the curse, curse of the law, every curse that you can think of. He has redeemed us, which means he has taken it out. Right. He has, in, in fact, he has taken us from where we had fallen and restored us, right? even higher from where we had fallen. Okay, he has redeemed us from the curse of the law, he be, by becoming a curse for us. Verse fourteen, you know, by becoming a curse for us, he redeemed us. That's one part of it. The second part is that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles, which means you and I, right? We are not born as Jews, but that that. The blessing of Abraham might come upon us, the Gentiles, in Christ Jesus. Okay, so whatever we can list as the blessing of Abraham. Okay, God wants you and I to receive that in Christ Jesus. Do you believe that? So when do you want to experience the blessing? In heaven or? See that's the question, right? We think, okay, some, I don't know, maybe thirty years from now, forty years from now, right? But God wants us as gen as the Gentile believers in Christ that you know that these blessings should come upon us, and of course we receive by faith, right? We receive by faith. We we, uh, we first of all we 
it clear this you know our mind of any wrong thinking that god is in a bad mood god is always angry he's waiting to punish me waiting to destroy my life anything good happens no he wants to step in and change it no we change we take all that out of the way and sometimes people think okay um i don't know what god's will is right i don't know what god's will is i don't know what's going to happen right when we look at the word of god we see the will of god what is the will of god god's desire the ways of god god's heart for us um okay did somebody raise their hand sorry i i heard something so um if you have a question you could ask Okay, I guess not. Okay, so um, so we and and also the second part of it, it says that you know that we might receive the promise of the Holy Spirit through faith. Okay, the promise of the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity coming and indwelling, and 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 also the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Everything, you know, the Holy Spirit wants to bring into our lives that we receive through faith. It's such a you know when we read this, it, it's such a you know awesome. Promise an awesome position that God wants every believer to walk in. Okay, so when we, you know, these when these scriptures become real to us, or this it becomes a revelation in our spirit, then we will never be discouraged. We will never be discouraged, right? Uh, no matter what's happening, what challenges, what mountains that we are facing, we will never be discouraged because this is who we are. in Christ Jesus God has made a way in Christ Jesus for us to receive and walk in the blessings of Abraham right that we might receive the spirit gift of the spirit or promise of the spirit through faith look at this verse 29 and if you are Christ then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise heirs according to the promise which means an heir receives an inheritance right so he's saying that we are you are actually heirs of seed of abraham your heirs and the bible also talks about how we are co-heirs with christ right so all this all these wonderful things happen because of the cross and we here we are recipients to receive what christ did for us because of the finished work on the cross okay any questions yeah under the dreamer line on page 13 we cannot take a specific rima to someone else and apply it to oneself okay so, uh, uh, what if there's a specific rima word like for example philip okay philip in the book of acts we see that uh, he was there there's a whole lot of revival happening in samaria and and god sends a message uh, saying leave right so can i take that and apply it in my life as a pattern you know something like that right example no because uh, a rema word is something specific for that person for that environment for that time right so well your rema word could you know might well be similar to that but we we cannot take that and say okay you know that happened so therefore i'm in the midst of revival and I, i'm sure god wants me to go unless you're very very sure that god has indeed spoken uh, through the quicken quickening work of the holy spirit so so in line with that like for example jeremiah 29 11 yeah. we often you know take it for us yeah so that's a general promise that's a general promise that's available for everyone you know that the with the thoughts of god it talks about the nature of god the thoughts that i have for you the plans that i have for you is to give you hope and a future not of calamity so that talks about the heart of god the nature of god describes who he is and the fact that it's a uh, it's something that is applicable for all of us and there uh, when lord the lord speaks to jeremiah yeah. so that is something that we can we get yeah yeah about. yeah yeah so um yeah so yeah I, i get what you're saying so if it's god's heart for someone let's say old testament saints or think can i appropriate that yes we can yes we can you know i'm just uh, just uh, talking about the specific rema word of god because when we say rema word uh it goes into great details it talks about maybe something that is directional something 
where it requires a you know some hard decisions maybe so it's good to uh, just make sure you know okay this is something that god wants me to do in this time and this juncture um, so that is that is why i said you know we can't okay god did that so so um, you know he wants me to do it as well um, but where, wherever we see a scripture is pointing to the heart of god the very nature of god uh, it's it's for because he never changes right he never changes uh, through time he's the same yesterday today and forever so um, and that's where we can take that yeah. okay uh, any other questions pastor i have a question yeah pastor if uh, you, god has promised you a blessing and you missed on it would that blessing be available again okay so um, so the question is i missed on missed it um because of the fact that i didn't believe god maybe i didn't uh, there could be many reasons right yeah maybe i just doubted god i was angry with god uh, my heart was not right with god you know whatever reason yeah so the fact is this you know uh sometimes maybe we miss that kairos moment yeah uh you know let's say like a job offer okay maybe like uh, a particular role in a particular organization and uh, we we were probably you know we said okay uh, no I, whatever you know we we just kind of didn't work on it and so that that window closed right because someone else took up that role that position is not there in that organization anymore right yeah. so 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 that in that way yes but can god you know restore can financial god financial uh, blessing i'm talking pastor fin yeah financially also you know i'm just saying you know so can can god uh, let's say if you are talking specifically about finance provision and finances yeah. can god provide in some other way can god open up some other door definitely he can definitely he can right okay. so it requires my heart to come aligned my me to recognize that oh yeah i i missed that and uh, and then yeah so definitely god can do that and that's why we call you know um, he's the redeemer right he he redeems those even those lost opportunities and uh, and makes a way for us right thank you pastor no. Okay. Um, any other questions? Also, okay. So let's look at um, um, the the fourth one. You know, so we are looking at all these things, which actually uh, should build faith in us, gives us the confidence that that God is uh, the one who's a giver of blessings. Right? He's the one who wants to bless. He he guarantees to prosper. Okay. One more. Um, the new covenant of blessings okay so we know covenant is a promise covenant is a promise uh, you know it's a solemn promise between god and man and we see that god has made a covenant with us and in fact scripture talks about this new covenant that he has with us right it made on better promises and so on what we read in hebrews and uh, second corinthians 3 um so this covenant covers all you know blessings everything and um, and so we you know and so we can be sure that okay god has made himself available for us all of him available for us through the covenant right so that is what he has he has said that he has made himself available for us saying i'm i'm for you i'm with you so i can bring this into your life so that's that's what we see okay so let's look at um um you know if you look at Deuteronomy 28 okay from up to verse 14 talks about the blessings for the person who actually obeys the law okay Deuteronomy 28 verses 1 to 14 okay verses 15 onwards talks about the curse of disobedience okay so let's not read that right now <laughs> Okay. Uh, and actually if you read 
it's um, you know we, we need to read it by saying thank you Jesus that you redeemed me from this right because Galatians 3 talks about the fact that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus okay the blessings of obeying everything comes to us uh, because of the Lord right so Deuteronomy 28 talks about the uh, about, about the covenant I'm uh, sorry about the uh, blessings right so we know that Deuteronomy 28 is something because of the old covenant where it talks about the blessings of a person who walks in obedience and uh, uh, who walks in obedience to the entirety of God's law okay now the verses that we saw Galatians 3 talks about the fact that well he took the curse okay he took the curse Jesus took the curse upon himself so verses 15 onwards till the end of the chapter he took that curse upon himself the curse of disobedience of the law he took upon himself okay so that's why you know this whole thing of grace is something which is which is mind-blowing really he took in this so this this new covenant you know the, that is why he said it's it's a better promises built on better promises this new covenant he took um, upon himself every curse okay and um, just one second yeah so let's let's look at second corinthians 3 okay let's look at second corinthians chapter 3 And uh, verses 6 onwards, maybe we should we can read from verse 5. It says, not that we are sufficient of ourselves in, in, uh, and, or think of anything as being from ourselves. Our sufficiency is from God. Okay, Verse 6, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. And then from verse 7 onwards, it talks about the contrast of the old covenant and the new covenant, right? For if the ministry of death, written and engraved on stones, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away, how will the ministry of the spirit not be more glorious for if the ministry of condemnation had has had glory the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory for even what was made glorious had no glory in this respect because the glory that excels verse 11 for if what is passing away was glorious what remains is much more glorious and so on so so paul is just contrasting between you know the old testament or what flows out of the old testament and he's talking our old covenant sorry and he's talking about the new covenant how which is uh, much more glorious right in that uh, we are in a new dispensation and so on right so because of this new covenant and new dispensation that we live in right we can be sure we can be confident that as a recipient, as someone who's part of this new covenant, you know, this is applicable to me. Lord Himself has made Himself available. You know, he's saying that I'm there for you. Right? So that's another reason for us to be confident of God's assurance to bless. Okay? Now these are things that um, that should be that needs to be really ingrained in us. Be part of us. Um, because you know, just like the nature of God, the general promises of God, and so on, uh, this needs to be a, really like a pillar of truth inside of us, right? Um, because if it is so, if it is not so, we will waver. Like we will waver in unbelief. Like we will not be able to trust. Because it talks about the nature of God. It talks about what God wants for the New Testament believer or what God has done in Christ through the cross for each one of us. Right? So this really needs to be 
strong a pillar of truth inside of us where we which we hold on to say god you know i need more revelation help me to be rooted grounded in this truth right okay so having said that we might have questions okay now okay you know i i understand that i i got this truth i you know i understand the nature of god then why are things not happening okay, we might have those questions right why is that person not prospering from the outside i see that everything is you know he's ticked all the checklists one two three it's all it's all falling in place why then are things not happening why then right we have we might have some questions okay so here are some hindrances that we're going to look at to god given prosper what's a hindrance right sorry sorry what blocks like it's a barrier a hindrance is a barrier right something that blocks um, uh, you know it's like a it's like something a wall which blocks something from hap coming across to us right um, so first thing that we see that wrong motivation can be a hindrance hindrance to receive from god hindrance to receive the blessing of god okay now god is making it available okay god is making it available god is you know he's given us this wonderful new covenant that uh, that we are living in and all these promises uh, the very nature of god is to bless and so on and yet if my motivation is wrong okay, if i have a wrong motive right then that acts as a hindrance okay let's look at this james chapter 4 verses uh, Two and three it says, "You lust, and you do not have. Okay, you murder, and covet, and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have, because you do not ask. You ask, and do not receive, because you ask amiss, that you may spend it on your." pleasures okay so saying you know you don't have you you lust which means that you you know intensely desire something and you don't have you murder and covet you know all these things are wrong methods yeah you murder you covet and you do all this you're violent and you do not have and it says at the end you don't have because you do not ask so it is is saying showing the difference you know difference in the method by which you can actually receive righteously like you saying you're doing this you're doing that because you do not ask you do not have because you do not ask and verse 3 says you you ask and you don't receive because you ask a miss what does that mean any other version ask a miss what version is that uh, diksha yours nkjv is it okay any other does anyone have a like a any other version asking a miss this is uh, james chapter 4 and verse 3 okay it's like asking out of place and asking maybe with a wrong motive wrong intention right and sorry because you ask wrongly yeah and uh, and the, and the reason is, is that you may spend it on your pleasures you you're so obsessed with yourself and that's the reason why you ask and uh, and that's why you do not have and you don't receive okay um okay so we'll stop here we're looking at hindrances to god given prosperity but i uh, just really like us to you know uh, read through the scriptures that we went through right now um, about the new covenant of the god's guarantee to bless you know why how we can be sure how we can be confident okay um, read that once through thank you god bless